Hey everyone, it's Julie Houston, and I am very, very excited about today's interview because we are going to be interviewing not only one woman that is looked upon very highly in the racing community and riding community, but she has an incredible story she's going to be sharing. I know we're going to be having a lot of conversation. Kezia Garcia, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you today. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to do this interview with you. <laughs> God, I've been looking forward to this. So <laughs> Kezi and I, a little background, we've known each other through a, a racing association that does a race the last few years and we've kind of met through that indirectly um and Kezia is a a racer she rides but why don't we go back and tell everybody a little bit about kind of your background and how you kind of where you kind of came from and kind of started riding and getting into it and starting from there okay so <laughs> when I was like nine, my parents bought me this like moped and it like had a motor on it and we would ride it up and down the street. I mean, mostly just me. And the, so that's where my first love came. And then I hadn't ridden in years after that. And when I got divorced, my kid had to go for the summer with his dad. So I was like, I need something to keep me busy. So I went and bought a motorcycle. I didn't know how to ride it. <laughs> So I had to have my uncle pick it up for me and take it to the house. And I kind of just rode around the neighborhood. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What was the first motorcycle you bought that you were like, I don't even know how to ride it? It was a Jixer. <laughs> a Jixer? Yep. Really? Yep, it was all I love it. <laughs> it didn't last very long because I realized that I have an old lady back and that wasn't going to last for long trips. <laughs> You and me both. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's how I started. And I rode for a few years before I met Harley. And Harley always drag raced. So I would watch him drag race. And he was like, you want to try it? And I was like, no, looks kind of scary. But finally, I put my big girl panties on. And I was like, I'm going to try it. And I did it. And I fell in love with it. Killing it. Killing it. Some of the best <laughs> times I've seen. Oh, thanks. <laughs> The You've got some really good times. I was looking at him. Trust me. I was like, she's kicking my <laughs> kicking my. <laughs> so what's your plans? Do you continue to plan on racing? Do you think it's going to be like a hobby? Like, what are you thinking? Um, yeah, I'll continue to race. Just we'll probably just do the temple races. I don't think I can with the business starting. I don't think I can have much time off to go to all of the races in Texas. So, and temples, I love temple. <laughs> I take it I might see you this week then, possibly. Mm, no, because temple like party drag race in Evadale. Yeah, I don't think I'll do that one. I think it's a little too far for me. Too far. Mm -hmm. That's the closest one for us. Oh, is it? Yeah. It is. Little River is, Little River is close enough for us to like go for the day and come back that's my favorite track me too <laughs> when I first met my husband before we even got married and he was racing so he used to race with another team and we like one of our first dates ever was going to temple party drags oh <laughs> racing like he was racing and I was like oh my god it's crazy and I I would never do that. Like you, you're nuts, you know. <laughs> <Never are. laughs> right? Never say never. Never say never. So what's going on? You said now the shop's opening. What's going on? Are you working on a new shop? Like what's going on in your entrepreneurial world? Um. So I decided to keep the shop and keep all my vendors, to, and I'm going to do parts in the front. And what's the name of your shop? Um. Well, it was Tires and Tacos. I'm changing it to KG Powder Works because I'll be powder coating in the back. Stop it. You powder coat? Yeah. Really? <laughs> so I my bigger oven gets here Friday. So I'm excited to be able to do bigger things. That was just focusing on like small, like smaller things like the 
derby covers. All right, so primaries. let's talk about you had tires and tacos. What kind of stuff did you do work wise with tires and tacos? It was motorcycle parts and service. And you worked on the bikes. I mean, I helped my husband work on the bikes. And you do power coating too. Yeah, that was what I did while we had tires and tacos. No. <laughs> and I'm just learning this. I, uh, I Wow. I kind of, I mean, he taught me the basics of it. And then I kind of just like went off with it and started experimenting on used parts that we had here. Kind of just get my foot in the door. And I think I've gotten pretty good at it. <laughs> I'd love to see some of your stuff one day for sure. I'm going to, I think my first project is going to be the drag bike. I think I'm going to tear it apart and powder coat the frame and some other stuff. Wow. Oh, I can't wait to see that. That's really cool. So you kind of found a passion out of all this. Mm -hmm. So you're going to stay where you are and work on powder coating. I don't even know how to speak. That's freaking badass. So I love that. So the new name again was K KG Powderworks. KG Powderworks. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like it <laughs> a lot. Have you been working on your logo? Um, yeah, I have someone working on it and they said they should have it done by this weekend. So I'm hoping to open maybe in two weeks, like fully. So brand how how can people get in touch with you if they want any of this work done? What's the best way to reach out to you? Um, I'm gonna open up the, well, actually, I'm just going to change the name on our Instagram page, the tires and tacos one, just change the name and then they can contact me through there. Perfect. I'm excited for you. I am too. <laughs> so I love this. This is like, Really, I love the fact that not only are you a rider, a racer, you're also a female entrepreneur like myself, which is one thing we love supporting here um, for sure. What, do, Where do you see yourself maybe five years from now? Have you thought about that? i not thought about it right now. I'm just living day by day. <laughs> living day by day, and that's fine. <laughs> just figuring it out as it go. Well, I love that you figured out what you're going to do with your shop. Like, that's exciting. It was kind of a last minute thing. Like, as they were, because we had that big sale. Um, uh -huh. I remember was, seeing the post about it. Yeah, my plan was to just get rid of everything and close it down. And the day of the sale was like, I can't, I can't let it go. It's like, I need, I need to do something. And then it just clicked. And I was like, okay, ordering ovens, like bigger ovens, make it. <laughs> so, Yeah. It was just kind of a spur of the moment thing. And cool. I think it'll work out. I do too. <laughs> I really do too. I think it's really going to be a huge benefit too for a lot of people too. Mm -hmm. I hear so many conversations about people needing it anyway. So I think you're pretty much going to be booked out right away. Yeah. I mean, I have people lined up. They're like, just let me know when you're ready. <laughs> How exciting is that? So what about your son? So what's your son into these days? Like, I know you guys do motocross too, don't you? Yeah. You dirt bike too? I do dirt. I don't really like dirt that much. It's not my favorite, but I do it because that's the only like thing he can do right now. Cause he can't ride on the street, but yeah. I try to take him every Sunday. We'll load up the, his dirt bike and then we'll go to Murphy's. It's, like 30 minutes away from our house, but they have a really cool kids truck there. And that's like his oh, favorite. that's fun. Yeah. So it's safe to say he'll probably be on a motorcycle one day. Oh, definitely. He's already claimed which one he wants. <laughs> How many do you have to ride is the question. Um, I mean, right now I have a Dyna. Quite a selection, right? Yeah. And then I have a chopper that Harley and I built two years ago. Wow. I'm going to have the drag bike and a flat track bike. What's the Dyna? It, it was Harley's. <laughs> oh, I, I rode a wide glide, a Dyna wide glide years ago. Yeah, I think that's what that one is. I honestly don't even really know. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Yeah. I was going to say, so what would you say to women out there today, like that want to get into either riding or racing or what would your suggestions be for somebody like starting out? Just do it. Don't be scared. Like eventually you'll learn to love it. 
But a lot of women like that I talk to, they're like, oh my gosh, you ride? Like, isn't that scary? I'm like, yeah, it is scary, but it's really fun also. <laughs> the rush. Yes. That was a rush. I never did a pro tree until that weekend. That was like the biggest rush of my life. But you did so well on it. I was like, oh my gosh, like your reaction. I've never in my life, first time racing, never in my life. And like, I had the black and blues down my legs to prove it because I was holding on for dear <laughs> Mike. Yeah. After that weekend, I was like, I was sitting down using the bathroom and I looked down and I have like lines of like bruises from like me hanging on to like the, the battery and the frame. I was like, oh yes. my gosh. <laughs> my knees were like beyond black and blue. I was like, do not even share a picture. Like we don't need this going any <laughs> wear down South. Like it was just so funny. I sat down to P2. I was like, holy crap. I earned it. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. And I'd never like, that was the first time that's ever happened. I don't know. I was just, I was launching really hard that weekend, like off the line. So I think that's why I was so bruised. Oh, see, I was babying it a little. Next one, I'm going to try to just launch a little harder. We'll see yeah. how that goes. We'll <laughs> see. Baby steps, baby steps, baby, baby steps. So aside from like riding the shop, all these new exciting things coming up. Like, what do you like to do? Like, what does Kezia like to do for Kezia when you're not working and not being a mom and not having to run a business? Sleep. What does that look like? <laughs> Sleep. <laughs> um, Sleep? No, yeah. <laughs> I like, I honestly like going camping. Like I like riding out somewhere and just like relaxing by the water, swimming. I love camping. That's like fun. Camping. Yeah like in a tent and just going. Yep. I, I love, love that. <laughs> Me and Harley actually rode from here all the way to Memphis, Tennessee, and we tent camped the whole way. Ooh, really? <laughs> that was like the best time of our lives. Yeah. It was so fun. That was my wedding anniversary ride. We went through, and when I met my husband, he said, look, like, because all his friends and their wives their wives all rode it was like you're not riding with me like when I met him like <laughs> 14 years ago and I was like okay so I took my little riders course I started on my sports drive rode it like once and I'm like this thing sucks it's top heavy as ever yeah so then he was like pick one of these bikes in the garage I ended up on the Dyna and when we got married our honeymoon ride was with a bunch of group of people some of them are racers that you might know and it was up through Arkansas, through through up to Mississippi to watch the ducks that walk out in that yeah. hotel. And then we drove, came back through Arkansas and highly recommend if you ever do it, stop at the bathhouses. We did that. Oh my God. Was that yeah. not an experience of and a that lifetime? Was like, that was like our, we didn't take a honeymoon. So that was like our honeymoon kind of. That was our honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> Us too. <laughs> oh my God. And that we ended up crazy. Going, yeah, we ended up going to Beale Street on a Tuesday night. Cause so our plan was not to go to Memphis. We were gonna go to Arkansas and then cut back through like Louisiana and come back. But we were so close to Memphis. We were only two hours away. And I turned and looked at him and I was like, babe, we are like two hours away from Graceland. We can't come all the way up here and not go to Graceland. <laughs> we did Graceland too. <laughs> oh my God. We that is so insane. Graceland, the ducks and the bathhouses. Those were the three highlights of the trip. Yep. Graceland was my favorite. Oh, and so Tuesday we were down at Beale street at a bar and some guy came in and was like asking the bartender about bike night. And of course, Harley heard that. And he was like, what? So he, he was like sitting there listening in and they were like, yeah, Memphis has or Beale Street has the biggest bike night in the nation every Wednesday. So he was Shut like, can we, can we stay one more day? So we stayed one more day and we went to Beale Street bike night. It was insane. Just like we sat there for 15 minutes and the bikes never stopped rolling in. Like there's so many bikes. Oh my goodness. We missed that fun. Yeah, it was crazy, but it was so fun. How crazy? How funny is that? I'm <laughs> dying. I'm dying right now. Like, 
And that was like one of the most amazing trips I've probably ever had. Me one too. Of the most fun Arkansas was like so beautiful alone. It was just like the beauty was just breathtaking. And like then on the way back, life. the bathhouse situation, like I didn't care who was in the room, who saw me <laughs> naked, who didn't see me naked. Cause you know, they put you in that bath and they give you that nice cold What Like it was just like, you don't yeah. even care. You're like riding, you're, they're getting the dirt out of your nails. You've got like <laughs> Math squirrel and face <laughs> and just dirt everywhere. And like, we were like in heaven in that bathhouse I could have lived there forever I was yeah. like I'll stay here forever <laughs> wow that is so crazy so all right I gotta ask you this as a strong woman because you are a strong woman like it takes a strong woman that does you know things to like ride a motorcycle or race a motorcycle or own their own business and go out on a limb and not know what to expect or what to happen like is there anyone or anyone that has impacted or influenced you in your life that you can say made such an impact at that that's why you're able to be where you're at where you're where you are today I mean my parents are the hugest the biggest impact I mean they always pushed me and they didn't necessarily always help me out because they wanted me to figure things out on my own. So, I mean, they influenced a lot of my decisions and I guess like my attitude towards life, just come on, like, just do it. You'll figure it out along the way. And if you wow, don't, that's you awesome. have any other option because you have to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. Like giving up isn't an option. That was kind of my option. There was no option for giving up. It was like do or die, life or death. That's it. Mm -hmm. So your parents played a big impact on your life. And I'm sure you play a huge impact on your son's life. What, what are his dreams? Does he ever talk about his dreams or what he wants to do when he grows up? He wants to be a car engineer. Like he wants to design cars. Wow. That's wicked smart too. Yeah. And he's actually like, he's pretty good at like Legos, like building and putting stuff together. My dad bought him like a huge Lego set and told him, oh, well, if you put this together in a day, I'll go buy you a bike. My dad didn't think that he was actually going to do it in a day. And he did. So he got a free bike. <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you serious? Yeah. But he's so wow. good. At, like just like imagining things and putting them together. Yeah, Oh, awesome. Yes. And Kezia, you need to share with Melanie what your new business is because I'm blown away and so excited for her. It's like, I'm coffee. already thinking about the work she's going to do to my bike, my plain <laughs> black bike, my solid <laughs> black empty bike. Yes. <laughs> Use a little color. Yeah. <laughs> so you're painting? Powder coating. Awesome. Mm hmm yeah, I have some wheels that I may need done. Ooh. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's all Seriously, you got to do we is just jump on with us. Day. We're already building business. Everyone's lining up. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to have a sign up sheet and like have a waiting list. You realize yeah. <laughs> this, right? Like you should probably start that now because you're probably going to need it now because people are going to be like, well, I want this. I want this. I want this. Yeah. I want this. And then forget about it when race season's over you're going to be busier than ever because everyone's going to be like, I need this, 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 and this. <laughs> Tear everything apart. <laughs> I don't think I'm so going to have to do my own stuff. I know. Yeah. Anytime you start excited. anything, your own stuff goes to the back of the list. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Very, very true. So we've been talking about how long Kezia has been riding and racing and you know, her parents have been a big impact in her and her life. That's kind of everything that we've been through in a nutshell so far. But we're very easy to talk to, Melanie. I'm sure you won't have a problem just jumping in. Okay, <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> so you're at the shop. I love the background. I love that you're at the shop too. Yeah, I mean, I try to stay here in case anybody wants to order parts or anything and I really don't have anything better to do <laughs> <laughs> that's good you're staying busy though I love yeah. that 
and I'm already kind of thinking about like the things we could do with my motorcycle now that you mentioned the power of coding. Um, the just, wheels are turning. <laughs> wheels are turning. Wheels are turning like crazy. So with the powder coating, you're going to build that in the back. So she's already built, like she's building it out in the back of the shop. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I just had to clear out like the lifts and the tire machine and all that stuff. So I can have room for the ovens and the booths and all that stuff. But it's pretty much cleared out. I'm just waiting for the equipment to get delivered. What to made you want to do powder coating? Um, so when we had the parts and service. Yeah. Uh, we had like a small powder coating area <laughs> really moment in the back and Harley kind of taught me how to do it a little bit. And so I kind of just started playing around with it. It's kind of like, you know, like they do like the dip powder at the nail salon. Yeah. I know it's similar. Yeah. It's like that. So it's like, I feel like I'm doing nails or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've had stuff powder coated in the past, but, um, the way it even came up for me was that I, I've been wanting to replace the wheels on my bike mm -hmm. and wasn't sure what I wanted, this and that. And at the same time, I don't want to spend a couple thousand dollars on wheels when, you know, you need exhaust and other things too. And you know how quickly it adds up. And yeah. so that's what we have some wheels. And so my husband's like, you can take them and I get them customized. Like, I oh, cool. I don't know how oddly it, quick, it adds up. I would never know that. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure your motorcycle invoices are just as much as mine. <laughs> <laughs> Which anybody that rides a bike knows it's not cheap. <laughs> yeah. You know, the frame we had built alone was like ridiculous when Bill and Dale bought it home. Justin Collier built a frame that mm -hmm. it, you could hold with two fingers. Mm -hmm. The gas tank's like this big. It makes one pass. Like literally you could hold it with two fingers. They brought this home at like four in the morning, waking me up. It come out and they're like, don't touch it. It's a work of art. <laughs> like, just don't touch it. Like this is a work of art, this frame. So I was like, I named it Picasso as a joke because the frame was like probably the most expensive frame I've ever purchased in my life. Y'all get the expensive stuff though. We no, like I don't. <laughs> backyard builders <laughs> yeah, no everything we do is either in trade I'm backyard or builder too i ride a regular sportster guys i'm backyard builder too <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day I know when how... I a lot of money i'll get something expensive but <laughs> <laughs> there's no way i will even touch it i won't even walk by it i won't even let the air of like my ass <laughs> walking by knock anything over i'm like just leave it away from me <laughs> and leave it away from my sportster my little sportster over here is not messing with you just leave it be <laughs> what all do you have done on your sportster though because it's pretty quick um chad hart built the heads on it so it's a 1250 okay and i added an air shifter so that was the first uh, time i rode with an air shifter that weekend too so it was the first time pro tree first time air shifter so i was like i didn't even take off the first time i was like yo i didn't see the lights they're like you're supposed to go i'm like the lights never went off and then true story i had to show her in the video what the lights looked like <laughs> i'm like oh they're orange and then yellow yeah because the everybody like, oh. thought she thought she was looking for orange or something and then they were what she called more yellow yes, or vice versa <laughs> yeah missed the lights then i was like okay because they switched me to open comp last minute and then like i'm going up to the staging lanes and they're like oh it's a pro tree and i'm like what's that like what's I've been practicing on a stagger tree. So I get up there the first one. I didn't go. And then I finally left. <laughs> and then I realized, okay, this is how it works. And then it was the first time with the air shifter. So I was like, oh, okay, this is fun. And that was just like, boom, boom, boom. I love it because my clutch, I kept trying to do it with my foot in my hand, but like my clutch was so hard no matter what we did, like I was just getting blisters, missing gears. Yeah. And I put a, an FX one clutch on it, which was a, an easy clutch and it was still hard. Still, yeah. I was like, come on, there's gotta be some WD 40 or like some <laughs> secret magic that like Chris Martin or like David Esposito knows like some little knob somebody's missing. And they're all like, no, <laughs> wait, but with, with the air shifter, don't isn't that have to be modified 
like a modified class or is that still street et so if i did street well no, no. my knowledge is still mo it's modified yeah, i can still it's, it's modified, modified now if i take the wheelie vr if i take the wheelie bar off i can ride in street et because some of the street et if you notice had modified bikes in it and they had nitrous and other things on so my bike's like Raylor 1200, but Chad Hart did do the head. So it's a 1250. But if I take my wheelie bar off, I could do street ET. But with the shifter, wouldn't that still be considered modified? But, I don't think they consider it that for the class. They don't consider oh, that okay. just like. It is still modified, like but it's not for the class. Oh, not okay. for the, the A wheelie class. board is what throws it into the. Into the modified. Yeah, which, modified. Uh, it, it doesn't make any sense to me because if they're, all the bikes are extremely modified. And so. It should, I don't know, it should change my, it. My it bike's doesn't. technically a street bike. Yeah. Really. I put That's the wheelie bar on it because four or four months, two months prior, I had an incident. That's scary. <laughs> it was an incident of like, so like, I, I guess I just opened it up too much, but I was also on a Kawasaki, which I've never rode in my life. So I was at the staging lanes and like wheelied at 12 o'clock for quite some time. And the time slip ended at the 60 foot mark, but I realized I couldn't get the front end down. So I like dropped and then the wheel, the bike went up over in the air over my head. So that's the only reason I had the wheelie bar on because I was like, all right, I just flipped. Oh my gosh. How is sexy. <laughs> that was the name of it when I got it. The key to how <laughs> sexy. And, I, and then I sold it like a week later with the, like, the lights and everything broken on it, hanging off, except I did replace the handlebar and I got my money back and then some. So I was like, okay. <laughs> that worked out. <laughs> yeah, that worked out. So <laughs> Melanie's just shaking her head. Yeah, no. I, so, I know we've had you on here for quite some time. Before we close out, are there any suggestions or any feedback you would give to any women today on anything, just anything in general? And it could be on anything, just anything at all. I don't know. <laughs> that is a tough question because it's that so general. Yeah, it is. That's a tough one, huh? I mean, I don't want to be like super feminist because we do need men, but. I mean, we can do things just as much as they can. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm kind of living proof. Like I can drag race just as good as they can. My first time going out on the track, I got third place. And the only reason I got third place was because I broke out of my time. Like, oh, awesome. you know, like we can do the same things. <laughs> Heck yeah, we can. And for those that don't understand, what is breaking out? So with Street ET, you have to guess your dial in time. You have to guess what you're going to run. And if you beat it, then you get knocked out. <laughs> so if you go too fast, that's breaking out. Yeah. If you go too fast. So Kezia is too fast. Just so you guys know. <laughs> that was her nice way of saying she rides really fast. <laughs> I just didn't know what my times were supposed to be. <laughs> and what are you in now? You're like in the low sevens, aren't you? No. Well, my bike was not running the way it should have been. Um, so I was a consistent eight all weekend. Like I was but eight in the sevens, right? Mm -hmm. I ran a seven. Yeah, you're normally in the sevens. Mm -hmm. But That's my bike like a... wasn't running that great. So I just stuck with the eights. Well, thank you for the best advice ever. That was really, really good advice. <laughs> Melanie, do you have any questions before we close out? No, I don't think so. Kezia, I want to thank you so much for being on with us today and being a guest and being on the show and letting us interview you and sharing all the exciting things happening in your life. Again, for everybody watching, if you want more information or you want to reach out to Kezia, do it on her. Which page do you want them to go to? Um, the Tires and Tacos page. I mean, it'll still be Tires and Tacos or... Um, it'll be KG Powder Works, or you can find me on Instagram um, on my personal page. It's under throttle.fixin.90. And that is how you can contact Kezia if you want to get some work done or have some questions. You can reach out to her there. Again, everybody, thank you so much, Kezia, for being on the show today. I'm so Love honored me. that you were on with us. <laughs>
May these nuggets of wisdom help you down the path to success and make you a formidable leader in your chosen niche or industry. Don't forget to subscribe to the show at fullerwalletmedia.com so you can always be updated with our latest release. Be sure to share with your fellow entrepreneurs who also want to unlock their fullest potential and win big in today's market. Thank you for listening. See you on the next episode.